Working with resources. So far in this course, we've mainly talked about tasks because these are the elements that drive your project forward. However, in order to complete tasks, you need resources. Resources, by definition, are costs associated with tasks. A resource can be a person, equipment, materials, or even a fee. In this lesson, we're going to learn about resources in Project 2016 and how to apply them to your project. You add resources to your project, not task by task, but by filling out a resource information form located within Project. On this form, you will list the resource name, the rate per hour or cost per use, and the availability. You can also add other information such as the work group they belong to or an email address. Remember, a resource can be a person or a thing. If it is a person, you can add their name or just a reference to them so you know who they are. An example would be labelling a person as engineer. You can even group resources that work together. To add a resource, go to the View tab, then click the downward arrow on the Resource Sheet button here. You'll see this drop down menu. Click on Resource Sheet. You should now see the Resource Sheet in the Work Area, as you can see here. Next, double click on a blank cell in the Resource Name column. Fill in the resource name in the resource name box. Choose the type of resource, work, material or cost in the type field here. In the initials field, type in the initials or the abbreviation for the resource. Enter any other information you need for this resource. In the group field, you would enter something if this resource is part of a group. In the material field, which is only available for material type resources, you might enter how much of the material or other appropriate information. If the resource is only available at certain times, enter this in the resource availability section. Click OK to save the resource. It is now added to your resource sheet. There are three types of resources in Project 2016. They are work, material and cost resources. Let's take a look at what each of the three means to make it easy for you to decide what types of resources you are using for your project. A work resource can be reassigned to different tasks, but they can't be depleted. A box of nails would be depleted, so it is not a work resource. However, an employee or contractor could be assigned to multiple tasks, but wouldn't be depleted, so it would be considered a work resource. Material resources do not use working hours, and they can be depleted. They have unit costs. Example of material resources are wood and books. A cost. A cost resource might be shipping charges. You can use a cost resource to apply a cost every time you use the resource. To add the cost rate for a work resource, open the resource sheet, then click on the resource in the resource name column here. In the row for this resource, Go to the STD rate column and the OVT rate column. Enter in the standard and overtime rates for the resource. That said, there may be times when one rate is not going to cover all the times you use the resource. For example, you might want to charge a different rate for volume work, then type of work, or by the location of the work. You can make it so you can set different rates by using the Rate Table feature. To use the Rate Table feature, double click on a resource name to bring up the Resource Information dialog box. Under the Cost tab, click on the A tab here. Enter an effective date for when the rate changes take effect. Then in the Standard Rate and Overtime Rate columns, enter in the rates. If you want to enter additional sets of pay rates for this resource, click on the B tab and other tabs and then repeat the steps listed here. Click OK when you're finished. To enter in a per use cost instead of a rate for a work resource, go to the resource sheet. Go to the view tab, then click the downward arrow below tables in the data group. Then select entry. In the cost use field under the cost use column in your resource sheet, Enter in a cost. 
Material resources do not use working hours, and they can be depleted. They have unit costs. Examples of material resources are wood and books. To enter a cost rate for a material resource, go to your resource sheet. Select the resource. Then click on the View tab, and then in the downward arrow below Tables in the Data group, select Entry, just as we did earlier. In the Resource Name field, select a material resource or create a new one. Make sure Material is selected in the Type column. To enter a rate for the resource, go to the STD Rate field, as we did earlier in this session, then enter a rate. Some tasks will have a fixed cost. This means that no matter how many resources you assign to them, they're going to cost the same to accomplish. You do not have to assign resources to these type of tasks. To add a fixed cost to a task, go to the Gantt chart view. Then in the Gantt chart view, go to the View tab. Click on the drop down arrow for the table button, then select Cost from the menu. Look at your worksheet here in the Gantt chart view. Click on the Fixed Cost cell for the task for which you want to apply a fixed amount. Then enter in the amount. It's that easy. To assign hourly rates to resources, go to the Resource Sheet view, then click on the View tab. Click on the STD Rate column for the resource for which you want to add a cost. Then type in a dollar amount. If you're using a rate other than hours, type a slash after the dollar amount, then add the units such as month or minute. If the columns are too narrow, you can hover your mouse over the edge of the column until you see this black cross sign here. Click and drag the column to make it wider and then release the mouse. Once you have your resources added to the resource sheet, you can start assigning them to tasks. Perhaps the easiest way to assign a resource to a task is to use the Assign Resources button under the Resources tab in the Gantt chart view. To assign a resource to a task, start by clicking on the task for which you want to assign a resource. Next click on the Assign Resources button. You'll see the Assign Resources dialog box. Select the resource that you want to use from the resource list options here. Then, add the units of resource that you will be using. If it is a work resource, the default is 100%. A material resource is assigned to units such as gallons, consulting sessions, yards or tons. When you assign it to a task, you put how many units of the resource will be devoted to the task. If it is a cost resource, it incurs a set cost every time you assign it. For example, if you have a resource called Licensing Fee and give it a cost of $100, it will be one unit when you assign the resource, or 100%, to reflect one charge of $100. Remember, units are written in percentages. If you need to add more resources for this task, repeat these steps until they're all added. Click Assign, or click Remove. Then click on Close, when you're finished to save the assignments. By default, effort-driven scheduling is turned off in Project 2016. This means that no matter how many resources you assign to a task, the duration of the task will stay the same. However, with fixed unit or fixed work task types, the duration should change if the resources affect the time it takes to complete it. For example, the task is to paint the office. You've listed a two-day duration. However, you hire two painters to paint the office. These two painters are listed as two different resources on your resource sheet in Project 2016. Having two painters reduces the duration of the project to one day. They will get two days of work completed in just one day. In order to make the scheduling task work along with the resources, click on the task, then go to the Gantt chart view if you're not there already. Click on Tables and then go to Entry. Now go to the Task tab on the ribbon, and then click on the Auto Schedule button if you haven't done so already. This can be found in the Tasks group here. 
This changes it to an auto scheduled task instead of manually scheduled task in your task table in the Gantt chart view. You can see the scheduling icon in the task mode column here. Manually scheduled tasks have a light blue color that looks like a push pin. Next, double click on the task to open the task information dialog box. Then click on advanced. Then put a check besides effort driven. Then click on OK. We talked about the resource calendar earlier in the course. Your calendar shows working times and your resource calendar will show when resources are available and the times you've scheduled to use them. It's very critical to the completion of your project and the timeliness that you keep your calendar up to date. But now that we know this about the calendar, it is time that we actually examine how it actually works. You create your resource calendar from the base calendar, choosing standard, 24 hours or night shift. After you specify the base calendar you want to use, you can specify the exact working hours. You can also select specific days when the resource is not available. Maybe, for example, your engineer is not available on Wednesdays. To modify a working time for a resource and modify a calendar, double click the resource name to bring up the resource information dialog box. Click on the General tab, then click on the Change Working Time button. You'll then see the Change Working Time dialog box. Click on the day that you want to change on the calendar. Then click on the Work Weeks tab. Now click on a blank row and enter a name for the exception. Then click on Details. Choose either working or non-working times. This means you will select whether you're going to specify the working or not working times for this resource. Enter in a time range in the to and from fields. Or you can set the days to these specific working times by entering a from and to range in these fields. You can then select the recurrence pattern or how frequent this exception will occur. You can then select the day that you want this to appear on. Then click OK twice on the dialog boxes to save your changes and close the dialog boxes.